Okay, so I'm going to start with, I think, the question probably everyone wants to know. Obviously, we saw some national reporting about the call with the delegation from New York that you had asked or had expressed your ideas that you wanted President Biden to step aside. Can you confirm that that is, in fact, what you said? And where do you feel and how do you feel about it now? Well, in the first instance, as I have repeated now for the last 10 days, uh, I was involved in a private conversation with colleagues, senior members of the House. Uh, I was asked my opinions on a whole host of things by the minority leader. But those are private conversations, and I have made it a point since I was in the state legislature. I don't comment on private conversations I'm having with folks or when I express opinions privately as we're trying to grapple with tough questions. So, you know, I, I'll let others speak about what they heard, but I'm going to continue to keep it a private conversation. So where do you stand now? Last time we spoke with you, you said, I think it depends on how he acts moving forward, what yeah. his actions are. We're now 10 days out. How do you feel about where the president is right now? Well, I still think, first of all, he ran in primary, so the delegates that are pledged are pledged to him. So if he's going to withdraw from the race, that's his decision to make. Having said that, I, I continue to believe that the president has a higher bar to get over now to get people to accept him as the nominee or to believe that he can serve as president for another four years. So for all the conversation about what do members of Congress think, I keep reminding people it's not what members of Congress think, it's really what the American public thinks. I mean, they're the ultimate arbiter of what happens, and that's got to be the case. It's always the case. I think he has not made the kind of progress I would like to see him make in terms of making that argument or convincing people. He has a couple more weeks to go before the National Convention uh, convenes in uh, in Chicago, and he's going to then have to make a decision. And I think there's a lot of pressure on people to say to him, you have to make sure that people have confidence and faith that you can do the job. And I don't think he's made that case yet. There is, it appears, an effort underway to uh, vote before you get to the convention. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's a bad idea. Uh, I think people should be given the time. I think we should stick to the original schedule. The reason there was conversation about it is because the state of Ohio had suggested at one point that because of the lateness of the convention in August that the Democratic candidate for president wouldn't appear on the ballot in the state of Ohio. They have since changed the law in Ohio, so it's not necessary to do it. And given the challenges that still exist and the conversations, uh, I think it would be highly inappropriate for us to do it. So it's not going to happen. I think they made a final decision today to put that off, which I think is the right decision to make. Had you written or signed the letter requesting them do so, that they do so? No, I actually just learned about it in the last day or two. I know there were a lot of conversations with colleagues about this, um, but uh, I think fortunately, given the amount of chatter that was going on and the pushback that was being uh, generated by the proposal, I think people realized, okay, let's not pursue this. There's no reason to pursue it. And, and frankly, uh, again, the American public has got to make a decision over the next few weeks and then the next several months on what they want. And I think that the president still has further to go to reclaim the confidence that people had trust entrusted him with four years ago. I still think he has work to do. I don't want to hog all the questions, guys. Um, one of your colleagues, uh, Adam Schiff. I'm still looking at her. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> one of your colleagues, Adam Schiff, has joined the ranks of uh, asking Biden to bow out. What are your thoughts on that? Well, look, Adam is a uh, highly respected member uh, of the House. He's soon going to be joining the United States Senate. Uh, he carries a lot of weight. Uh, you know, I, some people have chosen to make their comments and thoughts uh, public, and he chose to do that. I respect that. Uh, and he is a leading voice, so I think that will carry some weight. Can I just ask you directly, do you think the president should be on the top of the ticket? Well, look, I, I would today think that he still has work to do if he's going to convince people that he can not only run and run successfully, but he can continue to govern. And I, again, it's his decision because he has the delegates and the pledge delegates. Um, but uh, frankly, I think there's real concerns, and I would still have concerns today uh, and would share them with the president if he was interested. I've been in a lot of calls with him. I was on a call with him uh, the other day where people uh, asked questions. And I think, frankly, he's got work to do. And frankly, if he doesn't get that work done and doesn't have the confidence of, um, of voters, he has to seriously think about the existential threat that, in my view, his losing poses to America. Speaking of which, the uh, former president had an assassination attempt over yeah. the weekend. Uh, I'm just curious your reaction, um, just generally, as you were watching the events unfold in Pennsylvania, and if you've made any changes to your security, the people around you, and how you are handling yourself uh, through this election. 
Well, first of all, I was horrified. I'm horrified at any violence. And in politics, there's no room, as there's no room anywhere for violence. Um, so I was horrified by it. I'm very happy that the president, former president, is safe, uh, that he was not uh, badly injured. Uh, obviously, my prayers are with the family who lost their uh, father as a result of the shooting. Uh, there are real questions about Secret Service and what happened leading up to it. Uh, the notion that someone would be 400 feet from uh, the former president who's a nominee of a major party for president uh, with a high-powered rifle. Um, I think we have, there's uh, so many questions to begin asking there that it's, it's hard to, to uh, summarize them all. Um, as it relates to member security, my responsibility in the House as the lead Democrat on the Committee of House Administration is oversight on the Capitol Police, the Sergeant of Arms, and member security. So I've been involved in intelligence briefings now for the last four days. I've been talking to many colleagues. I briefed uh, the Democrat colleagues of the House uh, just a couple of days ago. We're obviously concerned about increased threats and the threat assessment. We're going to continue to monitor it, uh, and we're trying to make sure that all our members know safety protocols and procedure. So there's a lot to do, and we're going to continue to do it. It's horrifying to me that we have to even be having this conversation in America, uh, and I'm very concerned about retribution or people who uh, decide that um, they somehow are going to address one series of really horrifying events with more. Um, so we're monitoring it, and that's a responsibility that I have in the House to make sure that that happens. Forgive my ignorance here, but as you're in your position as the chairman of that, would you have oversight of any sort of investigative process into how Secret Service handled this situation? So just to be clear, my responsibility relates to members. So the United States Capitol Police, the, the House Sergeant at Arms, uh, responsibility for Secret Service is under the, the executive branch, mm -hmm. Department of Justice. Um, the, uh, so those that oversight, while Congress will investigate, my committee has responsibility more for member security and member staff. And have you ramped that up for for members? Oh, we're we're yeah, we have increased the intelligence gathering. So we're monitoring social media. We're monitoring um, all kinds of correspondence calls into members' offices. We're continuing to communicate with member staff and members' offices about protocols and procedures. So, we, yeah, we put a ton of work on this since Saturday afternoon um, when we got the call. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Anybody? I'm good. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you guys. Good. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Thank you.